This is the story of Jeanette Gallegos, aged 27, a beautiful mother to three adorable children who was shot and killed in the presence of her three kids by her up and as J. Dollar Tash. Justin who had been accused in the past by her ex-girlfriends of being a woman beater denied the allegations. Can we talk about this crazy ass situation you had because there's a lot of accusations about you being a woman beater out there. <laughs> this was a whole thing, it was in f***ing the New Yorker. But later all his lies were exposed to the world after he murdered the beautiful mother of three out of anger and jealousy. Hello and welcome to Twisted Crimes. Subscribe and hit the like button for more stories. This story will be taking us to Temple City, California. Temple City is a middle-class suburban community located in the San Gabriel Valley, approximately 13 miles northeast of downtown Los Angeles. Temple City ranks among the state's safest and financially sound cities in California. Temple City is a peaceful, well-maintained neighborhood known for its family-friendly environment and clean surroundings. So guys, I'm one of the winners for Clip the General's contest. He's giving away $500 to five people, so go check him out. Jeanette Gallegos was born in Los Angeles, California. It was where she grew up, schooled and settled down. Jeanette attended and graduated from Santee Education Complex and California State University, Los Angeles. Jeanette graduated with a BA degree as a registered nurse. She worked as health coordinator in Los Angeles. On the other hand, Jeanette was also an exotic dancer who tries to make more money just to feed her kids. <laughs> Jeanette had three beautiful kids between the ages of 5 to 11. She was previously married but wasn't with the father of her kids at the time of this incident. Jeanette was a beautiful soul on the inside and outside. She would end up meeting an up-and-coming rapper called J. Dollartash. J. Dollartash whose real name is Justin Joseph was a New York-born, South Florida baiting her lips, and caused her black eyes just like he did to his ex-girlfriend in New York. He must have been really jealous about her being a dancer and he could not handle it. He was interviewed on a podcast where he claimed he was not a violent person but unfortunately, it didn't take long for the world to know who he really was. Hey, can we talk about this crazy ass situation you had because there's a lot of accusations about you being a woman beater out there. <laughs> this was a whole thing. It was in f***ing the New Yorker. The New York yeah. Times. And I know that you want to clear it up because you posted about it on Instagram the other day. You said, I might do an interview one day. Yeah, three, day three days ago, you said, I might do a long interview about clearing this up. Yeah, so now we get we to hear We got an hour story. right now. Because right. we could just say first, it's it sucks because it's like when you hear about a domestic abuse case or whatever, it's like you want to give the woman the benefit of the doubt, but also as soon as they say that, the guy is just dragged through the dirt. And yeah. it's... It's, we're we're going to get to hear uh, Stash's side of it right now, I guess. All right, so I got into this little altercation with my ex-girlfriend, pretty much. I broke up with her. She couldn't accept it. I let her come to my house one night when I was going, like, the same night I was going to Japan because, like, she was pretty much homeless, you know? I just moved to this new apartment building in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Had her come through. I was sleeping. She went through my phone. I guess she seen some shit she didn't want to see. Pretty much gone on the phone, started like crying, t telling whoever she was on the phone with that, oh, she's gonna like beat me up or some shit. So pretty much, I wake up to her on top of me, literally just like punching me in my face. You feel right. me? Like the room's mad dark. Like she's just on top of me, punching me, like attacking me. So throughout that incident, like I did hit her through like self defense, you know, like. Mm -hmm two times, literally, in two seconds, and I just started restraining her, you know? Right. And right after that, like, I got on the phone with my mom and told her, like, yo, this girl just pretty much beat me up, and now she has a black eye, I'm about to go to Japan, like, what do I do, blah, blah, blah. My mom calmed her down, you know? So your mom was talking to her? Yeah. Okay. So she was cool, you know, we made up. Had sex, whatever, fucking same night. And then you went to Japan, though. Yeah, went went to Japan. She was in my crib, just like crying, whatever, whatever. I had like my, my assistant at the time, cause he was staying at my crib, just like pretty much remove her, cause like my building was like a brand new, luxurious building. Like she was just causing like problems or whatever. Uh huh. So I kicked her out. I had her her sister come pick her up, and then like she was just like texting me like, "Yo, I'm about to just like post these pictures up." 
and just like ruin your career pretty much because at the time I had like a sponsorship with like Alexander Wang I was doing like big shows I was about to get signed you know right so pretty much I, bl- I ended up blocking her because I was in Japan working you know like the time difference like so I was just really and, w- and what was she so mad at you about it was just the, the fact that you were fucking other girls or whatever whatever she's seen in your phone she yeah. was just mad at you in general so she's like I'm gonna air you out yeah pretty okay. much she felt, she felt like I cheated on her but in reality I wasn't even going out with her yeah Tragedy unfolded in the Temple City neighborhood of Los Angeles in California on New Year's Day in this house. On this fateful day, J. Dollar Tash got into it again with Jeanette accusing her of several things on a day that was supposed to be filled with celebration. He arrived at her house and started creating problems with her. Her kids were screaming and crying but he didn't care. He could not help himself during the argument and he ended up shooting Jeanette multiple times in front of her kids then turned the gun on himself. One of Jeanette's kids ended up calling her grandmother who ended up calling police. When deputies arrived, they discovered two victims, a 27-year-old female and a 28-year-old male unresponsive inside the home, they were both declared dead on scene. Police confirmed that the female victim sustained multiple gunshot wounds, while the male victim sustained an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Families of Jeanette were really upset with what he had done to the mother of three, they said he could have broken up with her if he could not handle her anymore. The three juveniles, ranging in age from 5 to 11 were removed from the home unharmed upon the deputy's arrival, they were handed to family members. A very sad ending to the life of a beautiful woman. It's very sad that some men can be this callous. It is never that serious. Unfortunately the kids would have to navigate a life without their mother. Jeanette was said to be the sweetest most caring person, always there for everyone who needed her. Her favorite quote is said to be, leave today because tomorrow is not promised. Our sincere condolences to the friends and families of Jeanette Gallegos. May Jeanette's memory be a blessing for her family and for all who knew her, and may her life and death be an inspiration and a turning point towards justice and increased protection for domestic abuse survivors. Please stay safe out there and see you guys in the next video.